Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to the May 26th Conservation Commission meeting. Um, Brett is away, so I'll be running the meeting this week with support from the team. Um, I don't have any comments aside from that one. Uh, Dave, do you have a director's report for us? Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. So I think we're going to jump. I may have a couple of slides here that Aaron teed up for, for me. Yeah, so just a couple of quick updates, uh, more kind of previews of what's to come in the next couple of meetings. Um, <clears throat> um, the first is kind of a quick update on signs or signage. Um, this is something that's been on my to-do list for a long time is really taking a comprehensive look at our signs or, uh, across town. For those of you who uh, use our conservation lands, um, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a hodgepodge of signs out there, different generations of signs. And so uh, I'm working with Aaron and uh, uh, Angela Mills in my office and we've at least uh, reached out to uh, uh, a, lo a lo local graphic designer um, to start to get some ideas on, on how we might revamp our sign program top to bottom. And uh, I won't say a lot more about it now. You'll, you'll be hearing about it in the, in the months ahead. Um, we don't have a lot of money for it yet, um, but I'm, I'm gonna work on that. Um, but suffice it to say that I, I would love to really kind of rebrand our conservation lands uh, and, and our trails with, um, you know, consistent branding um, from street, from the time you approach a conservation area, um, you know, on take uh, Mount Pollux, for instance, um, when you're traveling on Southeast Street that you know when you've arrived, you know you've arrived at a town of Amherst conservation area when you get to where you park or leave your bike or, or hike to and through, um, there's a kiosk there that tells you something about where you're going to be, what you might see, uh, some of the rules and regulations um, that might, um, um, might be important for you as you bird watch or hike or mountain bike or do whatever it is you do on conservation land. Um, oh, sorry, can I interrupt really quickly? Uh, Aaron, I don't think that we're live. It still says we're in a practice session. Sorry, I just realized, I was like, maybe that's the, why there's no attending. <laughs> Okay, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Oh yeah, so so that's where we're going with it. It's it's um, if you're familiar with some uh, other conservation organizations like the Kestrel Trust, the Trustees of Reservations, Mass Audubon, um, they really have a um, all established kind of a successful brand, and and uh, it's not so much a marketing. It's just there's also confusion out there at a lot of our conservation areas. Who's there's a lot of signage out there. Uh, who, who owns the property, who oversees it, who manages it. Um, there's been a little confusion over Kestrel Trust uh, responsibilities and Town of Amherst responsibilities. What happens if you have an issue out there? Who do you call? Um, we've also run into some challenges through the years with the Amherst Police Department um, helping us to enforce, you know, for instance, alcohol on Mount Pollux. Well, when the Amherst Police gets there and, and somebody might have a complaint about uh, excessive drinking at the top of Mount Pollux, there's nothing really that says you can't have alcohol anywhere at Mount Pollux. So the, the PD says, well, Dave, where does it say you can't drink on Mount Pollux? So consistent things like that. Um, uh, so anyway, you'll, you'll be hearing more about that and we'll bring you some, uh, some ideas here in the months ahead. It's, it's not gonna be anything that happens in three or four weeks, but I, I, think, um, I think you'll be pleased with some of the things we come up with. Um, Puffer spawn maintenance, I, I wanted to get a little sense from the commission tonight. If you visited Puffer spawn anytime in the last year or so, you've noticed that um, much of the cribbage on the main beach is uh, in desperate need of, of maintenance. And I, I wanted to gauge kind of where the commission is with regard to us kind of replacing some of that, um, that, uh, that cribbing. You know, these are the six by six timbers that have been there. Many of them have been there for 30 years. They have rebar, some of that rebar can get dangerous if there's rotted uh, uh, wood around it. Um, every year we bring in beach sand um, and we've done this for longer than I've been with the town. Um, but every year without the cribbing or if the cribbing is in poor condition, 
that beach sand ends up just going right in the pond. Um, and so I wanted to kind of gauge your uh, the sense of the of the commission tonight whether whether you would like us to um, do that through a, a request or are you comfortable with us simply doing that as routine maintenance annual maintenance at at Puffer's Pond? It's not going to be you know it's not going to be extensive uh, uh, extensive um, redoing. We're not talking about a hundred thousand dollars worth of work here and and months of, of uh, construction. We're really talking about probably a day or two of ripping out the old cribbing and putting in the new. So Jen, I might look to you if there's input or feedback that I might get tonight um, on whether you think we should file for that. I will say that it is extremely hard working that close to the pond to actually do any kind of erosion control anyway. We're talking about a, a beach environment where beach sand has been brought in for the last 30 years annually. Um, and we 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 simply have done that, but we want to, you know, we want to replace some of that cribbing. Um, so I do know the cribbing you're talking about, and I think so two thoughts or one question, one thought. The first question is, so nothing will change about the location or extent of the cribbing. So it's just replacing existing cribbing. Yeah, replacing, okay. replacing existing or where we pulled out the cribbing last year because it was unsafe. Mm -hmm. Once the, once the uh, on the, as you're facing puffers from the main mm -hmm. beach off of State Street, there's kind of a right hand beach area and a left side beach area. We pulled out all the cribbing on the left side uh, last year and the year before because the rebar was was uh, becoming more evident and more dangerous. We liked we liked it. Why don't you say restore traditional cribbing? Yeah, that's really what we're talking about here. If you're comfortable with us restoring that as yeah. part of a maintenance operation, we're yeah. not going to invest a lot of time or money in this because truly the beach <clears throat> needs extensive you know, redoing at some point, and that, that is a major, that would be a major NOI. And I could see doing that as part of a, a dredging of the pond operation in the years ahead. Yeah, so. yeah, that was gonna be my other comment was that I think safety is paramount. And I have seen situations like that where the rebar becomes exposed, like you're literally installing rebar in a sandbar. So um, yeah. it gets dangerous quickly. Yeah. So, I, you know, per, I, I'm a fan of replacing um, under safety and maintenance, and, mm -hmm. and I'm fine with that. Do any commissioners have any further questions or concerns about that? We have a thumbs up from Larry, thumbs up from Fletcher, Anna. All right, and I can't see, wait a minute, let me change my view so I can see you, Leroy. <laughs> Leroy, I see a thumbs up, thank you. Okay, okay awesome. good. We will, we <laughs> that will was my to... recommendation too, so. Yeah. That we'll try, good. To, try to schedule that in early in the early in the summer here. Um, next, I just wanted to. I think Aaron can jump to a quick slide. Um, we are going to. You will be seeing a request come in. I think it's for your next meeting. Is that right, Aaron? Yes. Yep. It'll um, be on the June 9th meeting. I just wanted to give you a quick preview. If you're all familiar with the Stanley Street entrance to uh, Wentworth Farm Conservation Area. Uh, or jump bridge along the Fort River. There is a parking lot there that is, I call it a moonscape. It is really kind of rough and there's manholes and, and you kind of take, you take, uh, you take your chances there with the, uh, the under, under, undercarriage of your car sometimes. And it's really kind of um, poorly, poorly designed. And so um, I've been working with our, actually our building commissioner who put together this design, which you will see in a request coming up in two weeks for um, uh, really just bringing in crushed stone, reorienting the parking lot. Um, so as you come in, instead of parking to the left, you park to the right, uh, we would move some of those boulders that are there um, and there would be room for 10 cars and one would be designated uh, for handicapped uh, visitors. And we would reorient the trail. You may recall the trail there erodes right down the middle of the trail the water all goes right down the trail and it's sandy uh, substrate there. And so you get kind of this, uh, this divot uh, in, the, in the trail. So we're gonna try to reorient all of that. And um, I believe Aaron has been out there and indicated that we are 
are we we are beyond the 200 foot era and I could you refresh my memory on that um no so we're just outside of 50 feet and and that's not a delineation per se it's me going out and measuring from where I see indicators so like where I see indicators of um skunk cabbage for example which are an obligate species so um yeah so we'll come in with with a plan, a, a completed plan in two weeks. I just wanted to give you a preview. It's it's kind of long overdue. This parking area also doubles both for the conservation area as well as for the recreation area there. This will not be pavement. It'll be crushed stone. Um, and we think it'll be a nice improvement, improve the safety and actually decrease the amount of erosion that's going on there and head, heading right toward the Fort River on the, the Harvey Allen Trail. So next slide. I think we wanted to talk just, again, a preview of a notice of intent that is coming from the department. Uh, this is the Epstein Pond down off of Bay Road that we purchased, I guess it would be in 2019. Um, and we're now partnering with the Castro Trust on some trail improvements there. And um, this just gives you an idea of four locations where we're uh, trying to improve trail connections there so that we can really open a loop trail around the pond later this summer, if all goes well. We've hired uh, Art Allen to um, delineate the wetlands out there for this NOI. We've hired Berkshire Design to come up with some um, uh, designs for uh, the bridge crossings, the, the stream crossings there. And we think uh, in all four of these locations, um, well, at least three out of four, we will be improving um, actually, in all four, we'll be improving the condition of the, the trail uh, uh, that is currently there. Um, so uh, we have one small crossing in the upper right-hand corner. We have a crushed culvert, which is area two. Area three is just a, a very messy crossing on a, a tributary uh, up on the Mount Hoyuk Range. And then the last crossing is another crushed culvert that we'd like to remove. So in all toll, we're gonna, we're gonna propose uh, removing a couple of crushed culverts and, and really improving these crossings. Uh, three out of four have been there for years. Uh, the area one is a relatively new trail that's kind of developing. And we wanna make sure if a trail is gonna be official there, we do it right. So I'm just previewing a notice of intent that'll come to you um, in uh, a few weeks. I think we'll be ready in two weeks. Is that right, Aaron? I think so. Yeah, right now, um, well, I'm sh I'm at this point shooting for the June 23rd meeting just because mm -hmm. okay. um, we're, we haven't solidified a design yet, but Berkshire Design is hoping to have a concept by the end of this week, so. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty exciting. We'll also be bringing you as part of this project, we'll be bringing you a new design for a parking area off of Bay Road for Sweet Alice and um, we'll include dam maintenance um, and a management plan for the, the dam uh, there at Epstein Pond. So we're hoping to really uh, bundle a lot of things in one NOI. So there'll be a lot to talk about there. Um, and I think those were my quick trail kind of project updates. Um, anything else, Aaron, that I might've forgotten? I think, I think you covered maybe. everything. Yeah. Good. Where's the money coming from for this? Um, we we are actually going to be using a combination of CPA funds yeah, okay. for some of the work, as well as some of the Eversource funds for mitigation. Um, we have uh, uh, some CPA funds left over from the acquisition of the Epstein Pond. And then we have some of the Eversource funds for improving uh, wetlands and, you know, um, um, you know, intermediate, intermittent, and perennial stream crossings. So uh, this kind of this work kind of fits right in. Right. So many of those crossings, if you've if you've uh, you know, we've all hiked up in the Mount Hoyuk Range, and some of those are 50 years old and have you know, some are on state land, some are on town land, and many of them have never gotten any attention. So it's kind of exciting to be doing it right, as opposed to just slapping down some six by sixes and. You know, putting some pressure treated lumber over it, which was what was done 15, 20 years ago. Um, so doing it right, hopefully for the next 20 or 30 years. Yeah, and so. one of them is a really um, excellent daylighting um, of the headwaters of the Plum Brook. Uh, it's existing to 
uh, ceramic culverts, which are grossly undersized and it will be daylighting that. So that'll be a huge, huge resource improvement. Yeah, it's kind of nifty because you right downstream from there, you can see uh, naturally reproducing the, the brook trout are right there in the stream and the, and the culvert, you know, they want to go upstream, but the culvert is, or the two culverts are crushed. Uh, so there's no way for them to get up. So um, this is going to be kind of a fun project to to daylight that area and put a simple bridge over it and be done with it for 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 uh, our time with the town, I'm sure. So, yeah. Um, I have one slightly or a tangential question. I'm probably mm -hmm. over this at the last meeting. I wasn't here, but um, the Stanley Street entrance um, to Jump Bridge reminds me. I have what is the plan for water quality sampling? Has that started yet? Um, and or when will it start, I guess? Yeah, uh, it will start officially next week. We typically start around Memorial Day. We did do an early sample. I was just curious. Um, we did an April sample of the two beaches at Puffer's Pond, Jump Bridge or the Fort River at, at Stanley Street. And then we also sampled over at the, the uh, Mill River. I just wanted to get a sample downstream of North Amherst and we got a sample over near Rise, the marijuana mm -hmm. establishment on Meadow Street. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting, the three Mill River uh, watershed samples were all extremely low. Uh, Jump Bridge was in the- For, for crypto? For... Yeah. Okay. J uh, Jump Bridge or Fort River at Stanley Street um, was higher than I would think for April. It was like 315 or something like that, even in April. Yeah. Um, it was a really low flow month, so you don't have the dilution that we've had in past yeah. years. Water quality has been low across the valley. So we will continue to do what we've been doing, which is weekly sampling at all those sites. I honestly, um, I'm not optimistic. I think barring any changes in the Fort River or in, um, in Puffer's Pond, I, I think we will run into, depending, you know, again, weather dependent and temperature dependent, we will run into the same kinds of things we did last year. Um, I will say that with all the focus on the Fort River, um, we will be partnering with the Fort River Watershed Group to do as much sampling as we can. In fact, um, Aaron and I will be working with Beth Wilson, who's now with DPW, and as part of the NOI for the Fearing Brook Project, we're going to actually be doing some before and after sampling uh, as that project gets underway. So um, there's going to be a lot of a lot of sampling going on in the fort and then upstream on the fearing. Uh, the you know the theory is that I, I think that the fearing is the major contributor uh, to our problems on the fort. Um, I think yeah. we still the jury's still out on that a little bit, but there's strong indication that the fearing is is a big part of the problem. And you should see more attenuation in the fearing with the floodplain restored. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, any okay. other any other questions? So, uh, NOI is coming your way from the department and um, uh, RDAs as well. So we'll get some things in the in the in the pipeline here and and get your feedback in the in the coming meetings. But I think it's going to be an active summer for for us bringing you projects and then trying to get them done. Uh, in a short uh, summer season here. So. We're able to um, get some seasonal hires. Hires. Yeah, we've we've. Uh, yeah. It, it's not been easy, but um, we are, we're bringing on three seasonal summer crew staff. Uh, they should be on later this week or early next week. Right. Um, we're still hiring. If you know anybody who would like to get get their hands dirty and do some meaningful work, and make a little money this summer, we can still we can still hire. Um, the, we're still waiting on whether we will have help at Puffer's Pond. You may recall we are trying to work with the ambassador program that, that was established during the pandemic. Um, that program is given all the governor's uh, you know, uh, announcements about um, um, uh, lifting the, the emergency order. Um, we're, we're kind of yeah, re regrouping a little around what, what do ambassadors do. I would love to have, if I could have full-time staff ambassadors at Puffers all summer, I would uh, take them in a minute. But we're not sure that the CARES Act funding, the federal funding, will pay for them to do that work unless it's COVID-related. And so how do you fit things into COVID uh, categories when the governor has lifted the emergency order? So uh, we're working on that a little bit. So. 
So good. And I will be with you tonight as long as I can. I'm actually um, traveling this week in Boston for some family medical uh, issues. So I will be with you as long as I can. And then um, uh, I'll sign off. But um, I think you've, you've got some interesting things on the agenda. That's great. Thank you, Dave. Um, yeah, so speaking of the agenda, um, Aaron, your report is next, then we have review and approval of meetings, and then our 725 NOI is going to be continued again. So we have until 735. So we have about 15 minutes, a little less than 15 minutes right now. What would be, do you think that you can fit your report and then of some approval of those four sets of minutes in that time? Or do you want to where do you want to start? Yeah, let's let's start with minutes and then um, we'll take it from there. It's it's a relatively relatively light meeting, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Take it. Um, does anyone need to read the minutes? I I know I sent them out very last minute because I was working on them today. Um, I've looked at them all. Okay. Yeah, same here. I'm I'm ready to move. I move we approve the 5, 12, 21 meetings, minutes. Second. Okay, um, all in favor, let's see. Anna, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Anna, you have a friend. No, it's okay, Sandy's about to start talking back. Um, I, for me. Uh, let's see, no, Leroy. Aye. And Jen, I. So those are approved. Next I, set. I, I move we approve the 113 2021 minutes. Second. All right, let's go around. Aye. Mary, oh. Anna, sorry, there's something I can do about that. You're good. I <laughs> no the chaos. Leroy. You're fine. You're good. Right. Here a second. And Fletcher and Larry Ari and myself. I gonna do the next one. I move we 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 accept the 122 2020 minutes. Second. Aye. 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 I move we accept the 226 2020 minutes. Second. Aye. 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 <laughs> nice, right, job. We did it. nice job, team. We did it, y'all. Guys, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Okay. As long as Jess Stardust says I. <laughs> Great. That was record time for four sets of minutes. Nice work. Okay. Um, so other business. Um, you know what? I'm going to just really quickly see um, if we have, um, I can't see part attendees. Um, yeah, Simon. I'm going to just go to the Eversource item first before we do enforcement because um, this is um, they're on the call and I just feel like it's, um, I'm just going to, I'm just going to promote them to panelists um, so that they're here and they can kind of explain, but basically I'll just, I'll just give a quick overview um, before they present, but basically we did the pre-construction meeting for Eversource. Um, what day was it earlier this week? Um, I think it was yesterday. Monday. Yeah. Oh, Monday. Okay. I'm I'm all I'm all off. I guess it was Monday. Monday morning. We had a pre-construction meeting for Eversource, and one site came up which um, has a. I'll say it's a field change. Basically, the first iteration of the plan showed gravel. The second iteration of the plan showed uh, timber mat, and they're going to use a combination of timber mat and gravel. So I'll let I'll let um, I'll stop there and let um, Simon and Nick present. Hi all. Um, am I able to share my screen or show me perhaps? Aaron? We're having a hard time hearing you, Simon. Can you hear me at all? We can hear you, you just sound like you're underwater. Hmm, let me see if I can fix that. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know if I can fix my audio at all. Uh, if I speak up, does that help? Okay. 
Um, well, if you could see my screen here, uh, it, it should be showing uh, a map showing uh, structure 14147 in the middle. Okay, um, so when we originally uh, brought this project to the commission, we had showed a, a, an entirely gravel pad, a work pad at structure 14147. Um, subsequent to that, GZA went back out in the field this spring or early or late winter rather to uh, refresh the wetland flagging out there. And they identified a couple of uh, additional wetlands which we brought before the commission when we went for amended order of conditions. Everybody still hear me okay? Great. Um, and uh, so we, we basically, at that time, once we had discovered this additional wetland that's just kind of on the fringe, I don't know if you can see my cursor here, but right here, it's just on the fringe of the, the right of way. So it was just barely over, overlapping the, the work pad, but casting uh, 25 foot and 100 foot buffer zone over a good portion of the work pad. So to keep things simple during the request for amended order of conditions, we just, we basically went to our civil contractor and we said, Hey, can you map this whole thing? And of course, they said yes because you know they do what we ask them to, and they get paid for it. Um, but it is a it's a, a good slope down uh, to the south. Basically, uh, the the page is more or less oriented north south here. So we came to you with our our uh, you know revised map set at the last meeting we were at, and said that we were going to be matting all of the fork pad within the hundred foot buffer zone. When we got the the um, change order request for funds to actually map that work pad, it was it was an astronomical rate. Um, because of the slope there, they would have to stack mats up uh, quite high, which would which would not only be a, a price tag that was just not justifiable for a single structure work pad, but also it would have required fall protection for the people that were working on top of it because it would have been stacked so high. So basically, we're asking for this change back to more or less what we had before. So at this point, um, we're asking that we, um, for any portion of the work pad that would be within wetlands, we will use construction mats, uh, but we would like the option to, to grade and gravel the majority of the work pad within the 100 foot and 25 foot buffer zone. And um, what we discussed with Aaron on Monday would be that we would, uh, within the 25 foot uh, buffer zone there is essentially the southern portion of the pad here. We would uh, stockpile the topsoil and use that to restore the 25 foot buffer zone uh, following construction. So the mats would again provide us any working surface that we needed within the work within the wetland, which is just this little sliver here. Uh, it, they would also be stacked up in sort of a temporary retaining wall to, to hold back any of the fill or gravel that's used to actually construct this work pad. Following completion of the line work, once the structure is actually in and the, the lines are energized, uh, and we go back to restore the area, we would pull back the gravel so that it is not, um, you know, being held back by the temporary construction mat uh, wall there, uh, and 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 basically grade it so that it's stable entirely. And within the 25 foot buffer zone, we would remove all of the matting and all of the gravel and use the stockpiled topsoil to restore. Um, the you know the native vegetation in that area, so we use the native seed mix to to restore the uplands within the 25 foot. Um, that's that's the gist of the change that we're requesting, and and also just want to note that um, previously the access road that is leading to this work pad here from the west, uh, it was proposed to be all gravel coming. I mean, we bridge across Eastman Brook and then gravel our way. This is a slope here, so we need to climb up using gravel because mats are slippery. And we had planned to gravel all our way all our way to the work pad here. Um, this area that I'm got my cursor around here uh, was an area of um, moderate to high cultural sensitivity. So it was an area that we had our archaeologists perform a phase one B study. That meant we actually did some test pit ex excavations there in conjunction with Mass Historic Commission and the Wampanoag tribe, who was had a, had a monitor on site when we were doing the work, um, because there is that sensitivity there. Uh, we basically um, coordinated with the Wampanoag tribe to agree that we will not uh, grade and gravel through the sensitive area and we'll use timber mats there. So we have uh, reduced the amount of gravel within riverfront by about 1300 square feet and change, um, which will be matting this area here. And so the, the additional gravel that we're requesting is, is just within the 100 foot and 25 foot buffer zone. Again, we would restore the 25 foot. Um, that is that is that portion of what I am here to present. Um, 
if anybody has any questions, hopefully you can hear me. Yeah, I heard you okay. Um, okay. Makes sense. I mean, I'm hearing net reduction in gravel. It sounds like it's such a slope that probably the best erosion control would be some mix of timber matting gravel anyway. Um, so in terms of protecting the resource, it seems like a reasonable adjustment. Um, commissioners, does anyone have any clarifying questions or further comments? Aaron, were you able to get out there? You and you see, you saw, I mean, it's hard, this map I have, is blocked on I have, map. I have not seen this site specifically, but we met and discussed it before. And my um, okay. advice to them was to bring it before you just to Got make it. sure that you guys were comfortable with what they're proposing. Um, but I had discussed with them the using the, the mats as a essentially like a retaining wall for the gravel. So it's like a combination of the two to try to protect the resource. And so I'm comfortable with what they're proposing to do. That makes a lot of sense with sense to me. Um, and I'm seeing some nods and no major questions. So where would we go from here, Erin? Is there anything procedural? Um, I would just make if well, I think there there might be something something else that we need to talk about. But I would say that we should probably just handle this as an, a minor administrative change field change, however you want to vote to approve it, but that it's taken into consideration. There's an order of conditions, you know, where the the impacts are, you know, they're balancing impacts here with other um, gravel in the immediate vicinity of this. So um, I think that that's fine. And we could just issue a correspondence stating that that, that change is approved. I'm comfortable with that. Anyone else? Any objections amongst the commission? I got some thumbs up. No big questions. Okay. Are you okay issuing that correspondence, Aaron? Do you want us to? Yeah. I mean, I think what we should maybe do next is have just let, let Simon, if there was anything else he needed us to talk about, and then from there do sort of make one motion that encapsulates everything. And then I can, uh, I would feel totally comfortable, you know, putting everything in writing to Eversource. Great. Okay. Um, so, so this piece here that I just presented to you is, is really the only part that has um, a need for, for CONCOM review. Uh, I appreciate that. I did send an email to Aaron uh, you know, stating the need for this and explaining what we're planning to do here. So that would be great if you can respond to that with your approval or however you'd like to do it. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to show here and let me know if the map sheet just changed. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so this, this is just an area that I just wanted to bring you to your attention uh, where we have just determined that we need to uh, place some additional timber mats within wetlands. Uh, this is near the, the Tilton substation, which is sort of the top of the UMass campus there. Um, across, gosh, I went there and I forget where the street is that runs across the top of campus, but it's over in that neck of the woods. So this is- uh, Strong Street area there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's several structures north of Strong Street. Um, so essentially this, this area of work of uh, timber mats that I've got my cursor on, and then this area here, um, we need to construct some extra beds. That's where we'll be pulling wire from. Um, so this is not something that actually requires commission review. It's exempt from Wilton's Protection Act, um, but we will be submitting a, a self verification to the Army Corps and also a notification under our administrative consent order with DEP. And the consent order requires that we notify the, uh, the CONCOM of the activity. So that's the reason I just wanted to bring it up here, just to, just to let you know that that's the plan. Uh, if you do have any questions or concerns, uh, you know, by all means, let us know. Great, thank you. Could you go just back one sheet so I can reference it? Yeah, so guys, I think we're looking for a motion to approve as an administrative change, um, the changes to erosion control techniques. Um, on how should I preference this? It would be, thank you. Um, let's see, I guess. This, uh, that structure number 14147. One, Near structure number 14147. One, just teed that I'll up. Make, I'll, I'll make that, yeah, thanks. I'll make that motion that we'll do the, um, the new erosion control techniques on 14147. Second. Larry. Hi. Leroy. Hi. And I'm an I. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Have a good night.
And there's okay. nothing else on the other one on the other sheet, right? No. The other sheet was, okay. was just an adding that we we you know don't technically need approval for, but just it was more of a notification. Yep. Good. Thank you for letting us. A lot of turkeys back there. They'll be hearing them <laughs> gobble. I keep my eyes peeled. <laughs> Plenty of ticks too. That's what they're eating, I think. <laughs> Great. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you, Simon. Appreciate it. Okay. So, um, I'm not sure how to take over. Yeah, I'm not sure how to let go of it. <laughs> I'll, I'll just, I'm just going to try to. There we go. Okay. Um, so where are we at for time? Do you want to jump back? Yeah. So maybe okay. we should open. Sorry, I'm just going back to the agenda. Oh, uh, we, um, yeah. So why don't we. Um, continue our 725 hearing and then um, handle our 735 NOI. Does that, is that okay, Erin? Yeah, that's perfect. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So my understanding was that um, over at Poor Farm, they need a little bit more time. And so I'm pulling yep. up your PowerPoint presentation. Um, it looks like we need a motion to continue the public hearing um, for 214 Pomeroy Lane to June 9th at 745 p.m. I move we continue the public hearing for 214 Pomeroy Lane to June 9th, 2021 at 7.45 p.m. Seconded. Thank you, Larry. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. And I'm an aye. Nice. Okay. Are we about to jump into business again? Oh, sorry. No, we're going to go to the Tofino NOI. Fletcher, why did you have? I guess I could bring this up. Um, is our next meeting going to be in person? So we, the governor hasn't signed that yet. What was that MACC thing we got on June fifteenth? The governor has got to take away his emergency act before they can do that, and I think the, uh, the general court is thinking about changing it. Okay, didn't mean to yeah. jump in so much there. Sorry. That's okay. I think it's just in flux, um, Fletcher. Whether we're going to be required to be in person or not, um, and so we have even if that does go through, we still have another meeting on the ninth before that would go into effect. Um, but if we want, if we want to discuss it, I think that's okay. Let's just go through our agenda items and then hit it in other business. Um, Cause I think it would be worth hearing from everybody kind of where we are on um, going to back to in-person or staying remote. Um, Jen, Jen, can I just add that? Because you may lose me in a few. Yeah. You may lose me before you get back to all of that, but okay. I think I think your assessment is 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 kind of spot on. We have one more meeting before the fifteenth, mm -hmm. so we will at least have one more remote meeting um, via Zoom. Um, I think there's a lot of discussion out there. I'm part of some of the discussions with the town manager. Or, you know, this is happening obviously of concern across the state. Um, it's an open meeting law. You know, really, you know, the governor's emergency order included the ability for boards and committees to meet the way, way we're meeting now. Um, once he lifts the emergency order, then there is no more ability for committees and boards to meet the way we're doing over Zoom. So the CONCOM or the planning board or the town council, there would be no individual choice. Like boards couldn't decide, oh, we want to stay remote and we don't. It would simply be across the board, um, a blanket, people need to come back to in person. So we don't know that's the case. I think the legislature is looking at it as Larry as Larry hinted. Um, so I'll have more for you. I think right after Memorial Day, we, we should be able to get more information out to you all. Um, but I think that's what we know at this point. And uh, believe me, there's concern across the state. Yeah, and just the only thing I was thinking, Dave, was just, I mean, I'm sure everyone, it would be helpful just to get a feeling from everyone whether they're for, if it should, we get, should get to a point where we can decide if we <laughs> want to be hybrid or, in, you know, or in person or remote, we can just talk about it as a commission mm -hmm. just so everyone can kind of be heard. And then sure. we'll totally, you know, see what happens with the state legislature. Um, mm -hmm. That Makes was the sense. only point, just to have a, a short discussion as a commission. Makes sense, yep. Awesome, thank you. Um, 
Okay, so let's go to the Tofino NOI. Um, so this is a continuance all the way. I guess we've been continuing this for a while if it was first opened in October of 2019, is that possible? Um, but it looks like we have, is Kristen here for this NOI, Erin? Um, She's in the attendees, is, are you asking? Yeah, for this yeah I'm just asking. Um, I'm gonna promote you to a panelist, Kristen. So you can talk to us, there she is. Um, and I think you're muted. Hi. Hi. With the WCA. Hi, thanks for coming. Um, so Erin, do you want to catch us up on the recent activity um, for this NOI? We know if everyone has a chance to open the, oh, Aaron's sharing it already, the email from Art. Um, that's kind of the issue that we'll have to discuss, I believe, in this meeting. Yes. So um, basically, Art went out with, with Ted Parker and reviewed the, um, the flagging around the vernal pool. And um, he did indicate that he recommended some changes to the vernal pool delineation, um, which he sort of spelled out in his findings here in this letter. Um, I think that based on my conversations with Art, that him and Ted kind of had some back and forth with regard to um, methodologies for the delineation. So Art was using um, first and foremost um, federal and state regulation to um, delineate the boundary and applying um, our bylaw. So generally how it works is that, you know, state and federal law covers certain territory and then um, our local bylaw is um, basically intended to be more, more restricted, more restrictive <laughs> as far as what, um, uh, what is done. So for example, if there was a delineation under state and federal regulations and then something under our bylaw said this delineation needs to extend further to protect more area, then, um, then that would be applicable. But if our bylaw is less restrictive than state and federal law, then it wouldn't necessarily apply. So that was the discussion that they were having. So um, that's basically what the, the conversation was because According to Art, uh, Ted's understanding was that that um, we should be following our local bylaw only for the delineation, and um, he had used state and federal definitions to to delineate. So, I guess there was just some they they wanted, um, from what I understand, a read tonight as to whether the com the commission was comfortable with changing the flag locations to where Art. Um, suggested that they should be placed. And I assume that that would be the case since that's why we sort of hired him to do the review and give it a second look, but um, definitely want to give Kristen an opportunity to address that. Yeah, Kristen, do you want to introduce yourself and just give us a, a brief history and add any comments to the, given the, the latest information from Art? Sure. I don't know if I've received Art's report, um, but we'll get to that in a second. Hi, commissioners. I'm Kristen McDonough. I'm with SWCA. I've been working with Ted Parker on this vernal pool since I think 2013. Uh, we have piles and piles of data on this pool. We know it's a productive vernal pool. We've done um, a delineation of the vernal pool boundary and the commission has hired their own consultant for a third party review to check the delineation that SWCA did back in 2019. And I believe your third party consultant completed that review in May, 2021. Um, so a little bit of time between the 2019 and the 2021 delineation. Um, I actually went out last Friday and picked up the three new flag locations. So there were three flags that your consultant um, relocated 
And uh, I did plot them on a figure. I'm not sure if Ted has shared those figures with you, um, but I'm happy to share my screen with you and share them with the commission. It's it's really up to Ted, it's, it's his data. Um, but it doesn't seem terrifically different in my opinion. Since the original delineation was done so long ago, honestly, I went out there on Friday expecting to completely agree with any relocated flags. Um, and the first one, I think it was 26R, I did agree with. 27R and 28R were a little bit harder to agree with since there wasn't any leaf staining and there was even tea berry down gradient of the flags. But again, in the interest of saving time, I don't want to create waves. I did take photos. I don't, I just, I don't want to make this more complicated than it should be. Really, the flags are just as much as five to 20 feet back. So it's up to Ted what he wants to do. And I'm happy to share what I collected in the field last Friday with the commission. Do you have the figure that shows the revised flag locations that you I could do? Share? And I, I should just warn you, I mean, I slapped these together really quickly on Friday as an internal draft just for Ted. So they haven't been really QAQC'd, um, but let me at least just share what I have right now with the commission. And then can you see my screen? Yep. yep. Okay, so this is the whole vernal pool boundary, which is in the darker blue. Mm -hmm. And this outline with the points is the original 2019 delineation. This orange, this represents the three new flags that were recently relocated about between five to 20 feet further to the west. And then I have another figure that shows a close up of just that one lot. So, and I should also preface, these lot lines are from the town of Amherst assessors data. So I'm not, sometimes the town data are a little bit funky but this is the lot line in yellow here. This is the street. This is the Berkshire Design Group delineated wetland boundary. This is the original 2019 vernal pool boundary. And then in orange is the three relocated flag boundary. This blue line is the 100 foot buffer from the 2019. This yellow dashed line is the revised 100 foot buffer from the 2021. So, you know, this is basically what we're talking about in terms of a difference right there. And is that lot eight in the, um, do you know what like Tofino calls that lot? I think it's lot eight. I'm not sure. There was a sign when I parked on the side of the road over here that said lot seven, but I don't remember if it was yeah. like right there or right there or right there. <laughs> One of those three is lot seven. Can I can I ask a question about this? Because I know there was some confusion um, the last time around on this, but I'm looking at the at this and the is the is the boundary off of the vernal pool or is it off of the BBW that we're looking at that line? Is this, that the yeah? The, that's a good question. So there is another shape file that I'm not showing on this figure. That's a hundred foot boundary off the off the BBW. This is just off the vernal pool. So okay. I can turn that on and turn that off and create a figure for the commission as you want. Yeah, I just, I, I this, this is, this is a, a, an issue I have as, you know, somebody who's familiar with GIS is the arcs that, that are being used for this. I, um, I, I'm not sure that that's giving an accurate representation of the, the, buffer off of the vernal pool. And what I mean by that is if you see the jagged line of the vernal pool, see how it zigzags sharply? Oh, yeah, exactly what you mean, yep. And then you look at the buffer, how it's like a rounded straight line. Like it's not actually a hundred foot buffer. It's like a estimated rounded arc off of the buffer. And so I'm not sure that it's actually picking up the hundred foot line. Like it's it doesn't, if that was a straight line, the the buffer would mimic the the jagged line of the of the vernal pool. They're, they're running an arc from a point. Yeah, which is yeah. which is to me not an accurate <clears throat> representation of the buffer zone. It's it's a it's a 
um, so algorithm estimate. Literally the GIS like buffer tool. Um, when you get yeah. into it, you can literally say like you want a linear distance from the points and then linear interpolation versus like a cubic interpolation between the points. Exactly. Um, so that's exactly and I'm sure you or your GIS person knows how to <laughs> handle and I'm, that. I'm sure you deal with this all the time, you know, whenever you're dealing with buffers, whether it's in AutoCAD or ArcGIS, mm -hmm. it's the same algorithm. So, I mean, that's how we make buffers in computers. There is a setting though that will make it near the um, vernal pool boundary in, in both CAD and GIS, um, which I'm sure you're, you know, your people know. <laughs> um, and that just might address like some of what Aaron is saying, where it looks like it's, it's, it's smoothed um, and therefore less restrictive where the boundary is. That's what you're saying, Aaron, right? Well, it is, it's tough to tell because yeah. it's, it's not accurately representing the 100 foot buffer. It's, yeah. it's a rounded yeah. so, arc. Okay. Um, all right. So I think uh, at issue here is really more for the commission because we don't have a formal report from ART yet, right, Aaron? So we right. and I just indicate whether we're comfortable with him using the more restrictive or more stringent delineation for the vernal pool or the town bylaw correct definition um so that's really kind of what's on the table here and i think we'll have to continue to the next meeting when we have a final report from art to then potentially approve this delineation mm -hmm. so Kristen, i feel like we cut aaron and i cut you off the questions did you have anything else to share or add no, like I said, I haven't even officially reviewed his report. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I acknowledge that it's been a long time since the original delineation. So I look forward to reviewing it. And if I can help in any way, I'm, I'm available. Okay. Thank you. Um, commissioners, any questions? And then if, if you guys could weigh in um, on whether or not you're comfortable with are using the more stringent, whichever is the most stringent vernal pool definition um, in this case, that would be fantastic. I think precedent is strong that we would use a more stringent, more restrictive, more protective of the resource definition. Um, but if anyone has any questions or thoughts on that, please let us know. I got a thumbs up from Larry. Yeah, we've gone this far, I mean. Yeah, <laughs> yep. Good job fitting it in though. I mean, we went from abnormally dry conditions to like a moment of normal, conditions to now we're we're going to be back in abnormally dry again so mm -hmm. um i think we got it in when we could um all right so it sounds like we have no questions aaron are you comfortable relaying our feelings about this to art so that he can issue his final report okay yes. so then i think unless anyone has any other comments i think we just need a motion to continue this public hearing for um, the Tofino properties um, to when would that be June 9th, Aaron at? Well, can eight? I, can I just, um, I guess one question is how long it would take to incorporate the revisions um, into any plans for the applicant and then the other question is, as long as they're incorporating those revisions, do we want to ask them to revise those, those buffers to more accurately reflect the flag points? Survey grade, you mean? I'm assuming okay. that the flags were already survey collected. Um, the, the, the wetland flags were already survey collected. What I'm talking about is just making sure that the, that the buffer offset from the flags like we had talked about was just to make sure that there's a um, a straight line in between points on the on the buffer because as long as they're doing a revision it makes sense to incorporate those to make sure that the buffers are correct before we approve a final plan that makes sense and i can share the data with berkshire design group um okay it's it's up to ted i'm not sure if ted's here tonight um he's not on the okay. list. i did send him the notice about the meeting though Okay, and I'm not sure, you know, what his contracts are with Berkshire Design and even with SWCA at this point, but I'm happy to share okay. my, as far as 
between us. I'm happy to share my data. Okay. So I'm, I'm just think looking at the calendar, that's only the ninth is two weeks away. So I'm just not sure that they're going to be able to incorporate all the revisions. Like if we should continue to the 23rd and give them a little extra time. That's no longer, a, that's a different, that perhaps is a different kind of meeting. A different, sorry, Larry. That that's perhaps a different kind of a meeting. We may be in house. It, it may be, but we would, we would still be posting it um, legally once, you know, know, 48 hours ahead of the, um, we just need to d continue it to a time and date certain so that. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Well, it's hard telling not knowing since Ted's not here and I don't want to put Kristen in a position to speak for him on that since there are other consultants involved. Um, should we conservatively continue to the 23rd? Is that probably the wise move? I mean, once we continue to the 23rd, we can't revisit it on the 9th? Do it. I mean, that's kind of my um, gut feeling just because we've got to get the report back from Art yeah. and they've got to make the revisions. So that just gives a little extra time and it's only two weeks from tonight, so. Yeah, totally, good call. Okay, so we're looking for a motion to continue the notice of intent for Defino Associates Inc. for construction of single families homes at lot one Concord Way, lot two Concord Way, lot five Concord Way, lot six Concord Way, lot seven Concord Way, lot eight Concord Way to the Conservation Commission meeting at on June 23rd at 7.30, Aaron? So moved. Yep. So moved. Seconded. Okay, Fletcher. Aye. Anna. Aye. And I'm an aye. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Kristen. Thank you very much. It's good to see all you again. <laughs> Have a good one. I'm going to move you back to an attendee. <laughs> good night, guys. Good night. All right. Um, so our last like hearing on the agenda, I think, is also a continuation, right, Erin? Um, we're still waiting on a response from the railroad um, That's correct. or their representative about the spray zone. Um, yeah, they haven't even peer. They haven't even approved the peer review yet. Um, the applicant said that the person in charge at the railroad is actually on vacation right now, so um, they requested another continuance. Okay, and are we okay doing that one to June 9th at eight or seven fifty? That's a good question. <laughs> I mean. Um, I, I would actually be inclined to continue that one to the 23rd too. And the reason being because we've already requested a peer review and should they come back with um, a check, we would have to set up a contract and get out there and do the peer review before we could even discuss it. Um, or they're just gonna say no and issue a negative or issue a, you know, a positive determination, basically not approving the boundary. So, um, it's another kind of tricky, tricky call. Um. Um, does anyone have any wisdom here? I think I'm comfortable waiting till the 23rd, especially since they've been pretty, pretty slow to respond anyway, and we're like moving into vacation season. Um, so I think that's probably the right move. Any, yeah, any yeah I agree. That okay. Makes sense. Okay. I, I think we're all correct. We're not gonna get much of a response. And... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have a check. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking for um, a continuation for the request to determine request for determination for New England Central Railroad for determining whether the sensitive area boundaries delineated on the submitted plan are accurate for spraying, and that would be continued to the June twenty third meeting at seven forty. Aaron. Sure. Yeah, that sounds fine. Okay. So moved. Second. Second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so Leroy seconded that one. Anna? Aye. aye. Larry, aye. I'm an aye. Fletcher's aye. in. Aye. 
Great. So that's the end of our like formal hearings. Mm -hmm. So now Aaron, we can go back whatever order makes the most sense to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll just start with enforcement. Um, so I got a call, um, 16 Eames Ave was a previous enforcement situation and they did all their um, plantings and they basically want to kind of close out the enforcement issue and get a consensus or a letter issued um, to them basically stating that they did what was asked of them. Um, so there's a... Um, intermittent stream that flows um, north to south. Um, and I guess previously they there was a garage being constructed on the property. They were doing renovations. And um, I, I'm not entirely sure what, what happened here, but basically the, um, that material washed down into this swale and um, they were required to restore it and plant it. And um, so yeah i remember this they built the garage and then we realized what was going on and had to go out and approve kind of their uh i mean it wasn't they were done building the garage by the time we got out there but we basically approved like how they had armored a mm -hmm. swale it was the summer of 2018 when it was like okay really really wet um mm -hmm. so it sounds like that what we thought was an intermittent system is maybe more of a perennial system now it was completely dry when I was out there, but again, you know, it's, it's been a very dry, I mean, it's, it's been <laughs> yeah. wishy-washy, I guess you could say there's been yeah. dry times and wet times, but when I was out there, it was dry. Yeah. Okay. So, um, it was stable. There was a solid vegetation growing, um, in the swale when I was out there. Um, I didn't. I mean, there was no, no stability issues or resource issues that I could detect from going out there. Um, so I, I don't really have a problem with closing out the enforcement issues if you guys think that it's been adequately addressed and stabilized. That's good to me. Stable. Yeah, garlic mustards hold Timothy then. Yeah. But I, I, it's fine, it, it's, it's green, they have a path. It looks like they demarked it with some stones. Yeah, as long as they're not they're not mowing it. it, they're not mowing it. Yeah, mm. exactly. As long as they're not going to be tempted to weed whip or mow it, I think we're in good shape. So I'll make sure that that's um, noted in the letter that they get that there's no mowing or weed whacking in there. Sounds good. Um, so sh would anybody feel comfortable making a motion just to close out this enforcement order? Sure. I move to, um, is that right? How do you say it? close the enforcement order? Yeah. Essentially yeah, closing I, it out. I, I moved to close the enforcement order. Was that 16 Ames have? Yep. Okay. Okay. Anna. Hi. Leroy. Hi. 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 Can I ask a question about the mowing and weed whacking? If there were, um, if there were in like um, aggressive invasives, I mean, I know garlic mustard is invasive, but I'm curious if that rule is always present or like where the balance is between controlling invasives and not mowing or weed whacking in the in the um, wetland area. I think it's a great it's a great question. In this instance, I would say no mowing, but if you want to whack weed whack a little bit, I know it's a good question. And I, I was do I was do a good question. I asked a lot of bad ones, so you know it was time. I know the invasive thing is so tricky because on one hand they're providing stability and right. better than a manicured lawn, but on the other hand, you're propagating invasives essentially. Right. So we kind of just don't really have 
an answer like are we we kind of just I don't think science has an answer to that that's a good point (laughs) yeah I mean Fletcher unless you think otherwise I don't No, I mean yeah especially with garlic mustard just flour the seeds are about to blow up in any day um uh, yeah and I don't think we and this and and also I don't think can we even yeah ask them to like treat to like take care of their invasives in this instance well i think our our thing was like erosion control and they did it but But now we have invasives i do think though you know this is from my perspective and other commissions i've worked for that have been very supportive of removal of invasives and i think like everybody's making excellent points but if invasives can be safely removed and disposed of off-site and that areas that might be disturbed by pulling them are seeded, I think that that's not necessarily a, a bad suggestion to make if they do annual pulling of garlic mustard. I mean, I know a lot of cities and towns organize almost like a, a day to go out and pull garlic mustard all over town just to get it out because it's so prolific. Um, so... Well, that and like I was thinking about some places I've seen with with knotweed and, you know, just how quickly it spreads and how. Yeah, I was this was kind of a curiosity, but it related. Yeah. to I just. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. Sure. I mean, I think procedurally we handle it on a case by case basis. Okay. Like, remember, mm-hmm. the, like two meetings ago, they wanted to go in and hand yep. multiple yeah. rows and okay. like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think we just have to yeah handle it as it comes. Okay, thank you. No, it's tough, especially the knotweed when it actually does stabilize banks. <laughs> so, like, mm-hmm. what do you do? Like, yeah. when, you rip, when you do take it out, you have to destabilize the bank to get it to really, get, you know, to really get it out. So, it's a, yeah, it's a tough. Right. It's tough. Yeah, I feel conflicted about it from a science cool. standpoint. So, I feel like that plays out and how we have to handle it on a case by case basis. That makes sense. Do you guys want me to say anything about it in the letter that I'm issuing them to? Why? Do you, I mean, you can mention that there's a lot of invasives because they probably don't know what that is. They're probably like, hey, right. like, what a cute flower. <laughs> like, I think that's a great idea. I mean, use it as an educational opportunity to say, just so you know, this is garlic must, you know, this is what it is. Right. Aaron, do you have like links? Maybe there are, there's, I, maybe I can help you find it. There's like homeowner links, like uh, information out there for homeowners to. But then aren't they just going to come back and say, but okay, we want to weed whack it and we want to mow it like and, and get rid of it. Right. And we're saying they can't do that. So, so I mean, I'm not saying we shouldn't send the education. Consider, but... consider hand pulling and replanting. Yeah, I think okay. that's what you have to say. Yeah, hand that sounds pulling. good. Keep that's the okay. keep the rider out, the rider lawnmower out of there. No more <laughs> zero. No more zero turns. <laughs> no more zero. T- well, that you know? was the issue here before, is that they were running across it with a ride on mower. You're right. They were. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thanks, All right. Great. Um, so Great let me question. get out of here. Um, and then the next one was okay. One twenty one pond view. Um, so this one's kind of tricky, and I know Dave and I are um, making some recommendations on this as well. Um, mm. So. Um, there's a gentleman, um, 121 Pond View, who we got a complaint call about. And so we went out to take a look. Um, this is a perennial stream that flows in his backyard. And um, on either end of the lot, um, north or south of him, is a pretty unmanaged woodland sort of in the back um, behind the lawn area. Uh, he has a different kind of approach to managing the land, which is, you know, pruning the trees. Um, He's been pulling invasives. He's been putting in um, these uh, pathways. There's definitely some issues with what he there. He's been cutting some trees in the riverfront. Um, There, there are brush piles, which are okay for wildlife. Um, There also were some trees that were downed in storms like this, this tree came down in a storm. There was another large tree that came down in a storm. Um, And there, you know, some of one of the pathways goes through a BVW, another pathway, here we go, right next to the, right next to the stream with gravel. So there's some things that need to happen out here as far as recommendations to have him restore some areas. 
and he's, you know, he's been cooperative with us. He, he's, you know, been stating that he didn't know and, you know, that he was unaware that there was any restrictions for what he could do as far as this type of management out there. Um, this is one of the trees that came down in, in a windstorm. Um, but a very different kind of management, you know, much more hands-on management, I would say. And then obviously there are some issues here um, that we need to address with him. So just to give you an, an update on that, and Dave and I have kind of been trying to, um, I'm, I'm in the process of write, writing some recommendations for how we could improve the situation. But it's, what's tricky is like some of the management he's doing, for example, removing understory saplings. Is there some like, you know, um, forestry techniques that mimic this to open up the, you know, the tree canopy to have a healthier stand of wood. So, um, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky to respond to this. There are definitely some violations on the site, but um, we're definitely trying to encourage him to be less um, intensive as far as management of the land and also prevent further intensive management of the land. Um, he's, an, he's an eager beaver. He likes to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a little COVID lockup right there going on. <laughs> yeah. Yep, definitely. So just as by way of an update that we've been. I mean, like, did he like literally gravel the bank and then lay wood chips down for a path? <sighs> yeah. That's, am that's amazing. Yeah, he said that there was some erosion happening there and he was trying to kind of stabilize it. Um, sure. But I'm going to suggest. Does he own the whole property? Yeah, he owns the whole property. He's been there about two years. When he, one of the things he did when he came in, he he's a stonemason. And he wow. came in and he completely replaced the the, uh, the garage floor, which was broken up in his in his house. He's putting in stone things out in front. I mean, he, he and he's working for neighbors and so forth. He does a good job in what he's doing, but he's just he's you know he's he's a guy that's got to keep on doing things. Yeah, Aaron, one approach on that might be just to point out that it's a pretty low gradient system. So in that system, like some amount of low bank erosion is like completely expected natural and like good for the system. You know, you could point out that like a braided stream system in this like very um, not steep setting is a, a natural stream system and kind of best for the vegetation, native vegetation that lives there. Um, yeah. I, I think, by the way, I think this is bear country. So you think the bears enjoy the path? Oh, yeah. I think, well, I, yeah. We, you should show them the pictures of the rest of this thing. But this thing, this thing, this, this brook here goes all the way from, from uh, uh, Pomeroy, all the way, effectively, all the way up to Hampshire County, Hampshire College. But the, it stops at the end of the property where the where Pond View, where, where the uh, Echo Hill, I mean, Echo Hill, Orchard Valley is. But all along here, there's this thing. And when my kids were young, they used to track along here all the time. Uh, this is a great little spot down here. And this one is this, this particular area. There's a two or three areas in here that are taken care of real well. If you go farther to your left here, it, there's not much going on. I mean, there's some down there that you almost can't walk through. Mm -hmm. You should show the other pictures that are in this thing because he's done a lot of we things. We talk about there. invasives management, right? Yeah. You know, in contrast, for example, what he's done here is a lot like what's happened over on Pomeroy, who I noticed you don't have a response yet from. Yes, yeah, so I'm meeting with them um, there. They were away on vacation, but I'm meeting with them on um, June 2nd. So um, that's when See, they're, they're doing things the same way as this, except they're doing it differently. And they've actually got a vernal pool. He doesn't have a vernal pool. Mm -hmm. So Aaron, what do you, what, how can we help? Or um, was this in kind of an FYI and you and Dave are working through it? <clears throat> Yeah, so like with single family homeowners, unless it's an, a very egregious violation, we try to, you know, work with them on improving mm -hmm. sort of their management strategy and telling them, hey, pull the wood chips out of here, pull the gravel out of there, you know, you need to put some plantings in or some some seeding, some stabilization. Um, you know, we're, we're I've, I did come up with some recommendations. I haven't had a chance to send them to Dave yet, but um, we're just trying to work with him because, you um, you know, he's, yeah. he's very, um, he's, he's very, uh, 
you know, he, he considers himself an environmentalist. He's like, I don't think that I'm doing anything wrong here. And so we, we're trying to work with him to, you know, just be amicable. And show, and show the pictures off to the left. I mean, this, this property, another 40 feet ends up in Hadley and the, and the farm fields. And he's got there's some things up there that he, what he's trying to do, I think, is getting this path here to over to the left where he's got a little play area and uh, so forth that's, that's been constructed. That's a way away from the wetlands, but it's over close to the farmland. Mm. I mean, it's in his pictures. I can't, I, you know, I, I can't share them. But. Well, it sounds yeah. like maybe he has energy to be harnessed for a little bit more um, stream friendly management, but mm -hmm. it sounds like it's an educational opportunity. I mean, yeah, but I'm sure there's deer in there and, and I, I know there's raccoons, et cetera, in there. And this is a real wildlife place down through here. Cool. So I'll, I'll give you an update um, at the next meeting. These are ones that we're kind of continually working through and there's, there's definitely no shortage of violations right now. So, um, All right. uh, and then this is 25 Lantern Lane. Um, they had, I don't know what exactly they were doing in here, but um, they they came off of the town sewer easement and it was an access to conservation area back here. Um, and I actually was notified about it from um, uh, DPW. And so they, they were talking about putting in some um, uh, raised bed gardens and that's why I guess they were doing this. And so um, they were, they they seeded it and and just hated down or um you know put um, material to to stabilize it. But I'm trying to see. Um, they were very cooperative. They were like, we had no idea there was there's a there was an intermittent stream on the uphill side of this, which there was not no impact to it because it's up gradient. But there's also the pond down below it, and so I didn't see any indications that there was any like wetland alteration as a result of this. It was more so just they needed to stabilize it and seed it down. So I I don't think there'll really be much need to follow up any further with that other than to just make sure it stabilizes. Sounds good. Um, okay, so a request for certificate of compliance. So this is um, 375 hot wine um, and I have some pictures. This is the, the swale here. There, I guess, is a closing on this this week. Um, the, only, the only real, um, I guess, concern I had is that, and I've been out there many times, um, this, this site has been under construction for a while. This, the slopes here don't seem to be vegetating that well. Um, I know that they've seeded them down because I saw them, I saw them seeded and, and um, they put some straw down, but the, the soil there is just not great and it just doesn't hold much down. It didn't look a whole lot different to this. Um, before the work even started, it, it's all, you know, it's always been kind of a gravelly. Um, I remember we permitted this. Yes. Right? Yes. This is the one that Bucky Sparkle designed. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And this is the one where there was a, this, this whole area of trees was going to be taken out and basically dug out. And um, w when I had, gone out there and visited it, I was like, I don't think that's a good idea because this this area here is like basically BVW already. And this this whole tree line provides shading to this little water body. I mean, I don't even it's 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 a it's a um uh paved channel, <laughs> but yeah. it's got BVW on either side. So <laughs> <laughs> but there, but the water coming through here does empty into a BVW across the street. So, I mean, it provides quite a bit of shade. Um, these trees provide quite a bit of shade to the water to keep it cooler. Um, but they've done a ton of plantings, um, planted a bunch of spruce. There's arborvitaes. Um, 
that they planted. They planted a bunch on the tree line and then um, it's pretty well seeded down. They put a fence in, which I actually thought was a great thing here in particular because now the lawn won't be expanded. Yeah. Um, yep. There was a question about where they were going to do things there. And I remember exactly, yeah, exactly. I remember that too. So there's there's fencing to keep the, the lawn, the lawn and the natural areas, the natural areas. This area in the front, um, so they, they planted a bunch of trees and then there's a bunch of blueberries that are in the actual, um, in sort of to the left here, there's a, I think they planted 17 blueberries in this area, which is nice. And then they put, um, I guess that's the end of my photos, but they do, they do have a boulder, um, boulder set in the back of the property. Okay. So, um, it's, I, at this point would just recommend issuing a certificate of compliance on it. Um, it's better than it was I, in my opinion. Well, yeah. I see a, I see a pretty good yeah. effort put into it too. Yeah. I yeah. Know. They, have, they have done things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay with it. Unless anyone has any lingering concerns. All right. So we need a motion to issue the certificate of compliance for, um, what is it? 375 pot wine. Yes. And if you could just include, um, a condition to, in, um, to carry over any ongoing conditions, just that will be in perpetuity for the, for the certificate. Move we issue the certificate of compliance with the uh, conditions as set existing in perpetuity for 375 pot wine lane. Did I do it right? Okay. Yep. Okay, Fletcher. Aye. Leroy. Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay. Aye. Is Larry an aye? Larry. Oh, sorry, did I forget Larry? Sorry, I. I didn't know if you seconded you are. I know. I thought I, I thought so too, but you're good. Perfect. So um, the only other thing I had is that we got two requests for Chapter 61 releases, basically properties where people are um, releasing, requesting to release the property from Chapter 61 protection. Um, but in talking with Dave, he said he wanted to get a recommendation from town council before we proceed or move on those. So I'm not going to recommend any action on those tonight. Um, but the where? Um, yeah, Aaron put it in the folder. There was in the folder Is that the it there in correspondence. So there's one. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Sorry. Um, for and that, I wasn't a job Fletcher. It was like me remembering Market where I saw it. 115 Market Hill Road. Hmm. 5.75 acres and then oh. there's another parcel um come on my pdfs don't open <laughs> uh, and then this one is uh this is the parcel Mitchell family this is the one that we did the the solar uh, no, we did a, uh, an, an, there was an ANRAD and we had it peer reviewed by Emily Stockman. It was early 2019, but, um, yeah, they, they're, they're, they're not, cashing not in. surprising, not um, surprising. <laughs> yeah. Saw this one coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, All right. Anyway. So if you guys want to read you. through this, but we'll, we'll get a, yeah. um, recommendation from town council on that one. Thanks. And that is all that I have for you folks this evening. Wow, thanks for sending this all out in advance, Erin, being so organized. Um, the only other thing we were just gonna talk about, even just a short sounding board was, so like Dave said, the, this issue of remote hybrid in-person stuff. So it sounds like at least June 9th is gonna continue to, our June 9th meeting will be remote and then Sounds like there's debate in the state legislature as to whether we are going to be required to go back to in person or not after that. And so everything's in flux. Um, I guess, you know, I think I just wanted to bring up that, you know, for me with little kids, it's very helpful to be able to do this remotely. Um, so 
I wanted to just throw that out there that if that ever became an option, it's definitely something that like would make, it makes a big difference for me to be able to like be effective as a commissioner. Um, but I also wanted to hear what everyone else thought and like, thought just so. so we kind of have it, an understanding amongst the group, like if there's an inclination one way or another, if we end up having a choice, um, I just kind of want to give everyone a chance to be heard. My, my comment is I'm a little selfish on this because I have two 22 inch monitors. You can probably tell the way I work around here. So I can see everything. I bring up everything on the other monitor, you know, that I'm, all, I'm watching everything. So I find it much more efficient for me to do it this way because I can see what's really going on. That's one thing. The second is my son is on the Conservation Commission in Foxborough. And I talked to him about this. And he said, they're gonna go back to real time meetings because their coordinator doesn't run things as well as ours does. <laughs> And he seriously said that he said that he said that they you know they they can't get all the stuff they want out of this but our our program works great in terms of the way way Aaron's got it going and so forth and it makes it, it everybody's able to participate people outside can participate easily and you can see what's going on I think it works better for us this way that's my comment so I don't have an issue I mean my my life is a little bit more flexible I think than other folks on the commission so going in, in person isn't um necessarily a hindrance. However, it does allow significantly more flexibility with other things that I am doing in my life to not have the the travel time and the, the city, like the, you know, that all of that intermediary time. Um, and the only other thing I will say, and this is a little bit more general and expands past Conservation Commission, is just the level of engagement we've seen is so much significantly higher um, that if it's possible from the public, and so if it's possible to um, have a hybrid option. I think I'd, I'd really strongly support that because it, it has made everything so much more accessible for people who otherwise couldn't come. I um, agree. That would be a lot easier to attend if you don't have to get a babysitter to come. Yeah, hundred percent. So or, um, yeah. yes. <laughs> so that would be, I guess, if, if our voice carries any weight, that would be my, my strong suggestion is accessibility of municipal government through hybrid models is, is great. Some of the some of the hybrid models don't work so great. I mean, there, there's people that have begun doing those, and, and uh, in fact, I've got a document here for Zoom meetings that is done by the Rotary Club, and it's complicated to do a hybrid one where you do both things. I like it like the way it is here. Yeah, and um, Aaron, I'm happy to. I'm, I mean, I'm, I know that this isn't necessarily something that you have the uh, that you are you are handling. Um, this is one of the things that I've been working on at my my big kid job um, is the remote work, return to work, hybrid work, like what are the options there? And so if that is ever helpful, um, let me know. I'm happy to send along the research I've done and the work I've done. It does take hybrid specifically, not fully remote. Hybrid specifically does take uh, increased tech versus fully remote. So um, there are ways to do it well, but it would need, it would be a deeper partnership with Amherst Media and with IT um, versus just staying fully remote. I'm interested, I'm interested in that. Yeah, happy to talk more. I, I mean, I don't want to take up folks' time in this. Oh, I know, I know, but I mean, yeah, things yeah, really yeah. It's it's before. it's a possibility. It's just it takes a little bit more intentional work. Yep, yeah. that's super helpful. Thanks, guys. Fletcher, Leroy, did you guys have any strong feelings or want to share any reflections on that? I was just thinking what Anna said about public accessibility. And uh, I, I obviously my time on the commission has been short, so I can't speak directly to how much it's increased, but we have seen a lot of people since I've been here. So I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it also it just comes down to um, we the coordination, especially, you know, what Aaron's doing and right. Jen, we're able to hop on. So it's nice that we, we have a team that can that can work. Right. you know, in that way. So when we're talking about a hybrid, so I don't care either way, uh, in person or, or Zoom, you know, personally, I like in person. I mean, it's just, it's easier to, I feel easier to collaborate with and talk and talk to with you all about. Um, but I do agree that um, there is more accessibility in terms of the public. And I, gosh, not now thinking about like all the like consultants that would like come to these night meetings, you know, from Eastern Mass, like now they don't have to do that. Now they were going to have to do that again, like, whew, but that's not me. But anyway, but I, I, I understand the flexibility and, and where um, January you're coming from. And um, um, so I'm happy to do either one. 
And if it's a hybrid, that's fine too. Because yeah, I got home at quarter of seven tonight. <laughs> so it's like, but I was able to get beyond time. So. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think what, from, from my perspective, generally speaking too, one thing is like, here we are trying to improve the environment with our, with what we're doing here. And here are <laughs> six people who aren't having to drive right, exactly. from our homes to work or to the town hall and then drive back. And that's saving fossil fuels and contributing to, you well, know, so, less environmental so impacts, you know, so um, yeah. And then Ooh. all the people who attend, I mean, and also, I mean, I feel like uh, these meetings are, can be very disenfranchising to people who have children and, uh, you know, or don't have myself included, you know, it's like, you got to get a babysitter, you, you know, it's at nighttime, you can't say goodnight to your children, you know, it's like, um, you know, and people aren't going to come out of their homes if they have small children to comment on a project, um, it, if they don't want to leave their kids. And, and so then those people are, are cut out of the equation as far as, you know, being involved with what's going on. So, but I mean, I think you guys are all making amazing points. And um, I think that there, there is a direction, the direction of the future is, um, you know, progress and how do we see progress and, and in terms of like, um, are we going to change with the times or are we not, you know, and yeah. um, that's kind of how I see it. It's like, it's a changing world. We're becoming more global. And um, are we going to continue to, you know, restrict access or are we going to open, break down barriers and encourage everybody to participate as they have been? Um, yeah. Open access was a good idea, but when you, when times have changed. I mean, now we record our meetings. They, people can go in and look at it anytime they want to to see what's going on in the past meetings. So they've got easy yeah. access to things. We're clearly open. It's just that it's yeah. more convenient. I mean, before with an open meeting, you've got to go to the meeting to get there. But now you can look at the recording. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think the other elephant in the room is, you know, people are scared still, yeah. you know, and yeah. afraid even, even with vaccinations, you know, there are children aren't vaccinated yet you know there's people in the community who <gasps> may be immunocompromised or you know can't get immunized and so they're shut out now of the equation right. too and talk about accessibility i mean imagine if you have a reason that you cannot be immunized like that right. your only way to participate is by coming in person to a meeting that's right and so <laughs> open meeting law, it changes the whole perspective on it. Is it really open to everybody now? You yeah. know? Um, but I mean, I, I think you guys, it's, it's a really interesting discussion and I think you guys all make really good points. And I guess the, the question is, we're the only ones sitting here right now with this and this will be on YouTube obviously, but do you guys want to submit comments to anyone as far as how it's worked for the conservation commission to say, Hey, it's worked really well for us. We've, you know, it's worked well, for, you know, just yeah. to stay in support or not in support of continuing this way, regardless of, you know, because if if the legislature approves us continuing this way, and then we're still, you know, not continuing like this, maybe it's important to communicate these thoughts to people who are leaders in town. I don't know. Yeah. Why can't Why can't yeah. we, Dave submit this to the town manager? So, so our just discussion. I yeah. Would, well, I would I would argue a little bit in favor of an actual letter from the Conservation Commission to both Paul, Dave, and Town Council, saying that you know we'd like to learn from this time, and we'd let, we've noticed that there's increased accessibility. Our commissioners are able to make more meetings and participate in different ways that they weren't able to before. I think articulating our points in an actual letter, um, because you know I mean. Town Council and Paul are in 27,000 meetings a week. With all due respect, they're not going to come back and watch this to see what we've been doing. Um, they're right. going to rely on Aaron and Dave to give them updates. And so I, I do think a letter that we all digitally sign um, would be a stronger a stronger statement. Yeah. yeah. My only the only thought on that is just that we don't have our chair here tonight. So what uh, we can do, we if can we were comfortable, talk. is wait until the June 9th meeting just so that we hear more about what the trajectory of what's going on in the state legislature is we'll have more information um at the june 9th meeting get brett's input you know input because 
he would be the one who'd probably chair, you know, lead the letter effort as the chair. Um, yeah. But I mean, if if you feel like that's pushing it down the road too far, we could also like draft something before that. I mean, I think the only thought that I had around drafting before it was it would just take less time at the meeting. But, right. but totally. I, I don't necessarily, um, I don't have a, a strong preference either way. Well, matter. how about this? So do you think we'll have minutes to review from this meeting for the next meeting? Or is that like totally like not? That's, that's what I've been working towards. Uh, <laughs> but I don't I think, want to put all the meetings on you. I was just yeah, thinking of like no. a way to like take this and put it into. <laughs> no, it's been, it's been, you know, since I've, since I've been working full, you know, more full-time for the town, it's been a goal of mine to catch up on minutes and it, we're really behind because it's been very busy. So I've been, as you, as you've noticed, cause we've had four sets on the last two meetings, yeah, really um, pushing <laughs> to get caught up. And well, well, you know what, something we could do also is just because we're also missing Laura, we could just do a, uh, an email out to all of us said, Hey, yeah. we just talked about this. We're, we're, uh, we want to hear what, yeah. I think we have Lord. to it's an open yeah. meeting law violation, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can't. I, I wish that we could. I wish oh. that we could, but it communication amongst board members <laughs> outside of an open meeting is a open meeting. Or just to mention that we talked about it, and then we're going to bring it up at the next meeting. Okay. I could. You know, what I mean? like just letting Laura, Laura and, and Brett know that we've been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just yep. had this. We're, we're, we? we're talking about putting a letter together to voice yeah. our support or not support for. Yeah. Hybrid. Hybrid. And and we can email you, Aaron, right? So would would yes. it privately? So would it be helpful if those of us who feel strongly just kind of jotted down the bullet points of why and and what we feel, send it to you. You put it on the agenda for the next meeting and let Laura and Brett know, hey, we're going to be discussing this, and that way we have the content and we kind of just need to like mm -hmm. push it in. Yeah. Would that make? I'm trying to think about what makes yeah. life a little easier. I don't know. I think that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah, and I don't want to speak for the commission at all. I want the commission to speak to, you know, the powers that be in town. So yeah, you know, that's that's really entirely up to you how you want to do that. I think that's okay. a good plan, Anna. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and I think you're right, Jen. That that Brett should like spearhead the actual. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay, so what we're doing just to confirm so Aaron you're going to put it on the agenda for our next meeting in the time from now until that meeting we will send you on you and you only um, any thoughts that we have around why um, we want to see what we want to see, uh, and you will let Brett and Laura know. Did I miss anything or does that cover. No, it? that sounds great and in the meantime if anyone wants to write letters, you know if you feel strongly about it and you want to write a letter to the legislature. That's also a not a bad thing to do if you're in favor of it and it's helpful Sorry. for your life you know oh my god how dare you let your dog bark? i know it's the thunder y'all it's we're, we're having a time over here like i'll freak out in the fair household <laughs> um yes point taken aaron we should write i should write a letter to the legislature um okay well i think that's all we had I, I have one i have one question when is the end of this board year? Um, so the end of the fiscal year, as I understand it, is the end of June, like June yes. 30th. And um, that's a great, a great and important thing for us to bring up also probably at the next meeting to talk about um, for folks whose terms are ending and- uh, Two people that are ending that I know of, Brett and me. Okay. And then the um, other thing on that, Aaron, is that we'll need to uh, talk about if folks want me to stay as the CPA rep or if um, someone else is interested and, and passionate about it. I'm loving it. So, you know, I'm not trying to leave. But uh, if Fletcher really wants a spot back, he can, we you know we can like Thunderdome style fight it out. Uh, nice. But All right, uh, now, really, now, now I'm up for it. <laughs> but the other thing is um, if there is a lighter agenda in the future, I'd love to give an update of what we did in CPA. It's not, it is not pressing because there was no conservation, there were no conservation projects in the docket, but um, mm -hmm. be for your listening pleasure at a future meeting, I'd love to, you know, talk about it. Absolutely. I'll, um, I'll try to kind of weigh business. This, this meeting really surprised me 
like the last meetings have been, I mean, the weeks leading up to those meetings have been crazy. This, this few weeks in between meetings has like this week in particular was like a huge exhale for me. Cause it was like, my phone was just, I wasn't getting like 10 phone messages a day, like 20 emails a day, you know, like inquiries needing responses so it's like it gave me a chance to catch up catch my breath and I'm hoping for the summer as vacations happen we'll have time to catch up on like those types of administrative details right. that we really need to yeah yeah, sure. yeah. totally not a priority <laughs> but yeah well, that's great sure. okay anything Better else time. seems to good job Jen thanks thanks everyone great team yeah. effort um, Can I make a motion to adjourn? Second. Okay. Did you actually make the motion, Fletcher? Was that okay? Yes. <laughs> oh, I, I second it. I second. So I, know, I know. All right. Okay, Leroy. Uh, uh, Anna. Aye. Aye. Sam and I. Larry and I. Fletcher. Aye. All good. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Thanks guys. Everyone. Have a great night. Yeah. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. My pleasure. Yeah. Have a good weekend.